nothing tops off a cabinet project like crown molding on the top of the cabinet. So what I want to do here is give you some tricks to make sure that when you put crown molding on your piece of furniture, it comes out real nice. So let me catch you up with what I've done already. First, on the cabinet itself, I've added these gussets at the top. And the gussets are cut at an angle that matches what's called the spring angle of the crown molding itself. So the deal with that is that if all I do is glue and brad the crown molding here onto the cabinet, if something ever grabs onto the top there, it's going to be pretty fragile and may become loose. So the gusset is going to give us a surface that we can fasten to and glue to, make sure everything is nice and rigid. I've got the piece on this side already in place. The way I did that was I took another piece, a piece of scrap that had the matching angle on it, held that in place, that let me position this one, got it glued and bratted up there. Now what I'm ready to do is get the front of this baby going. So the problem is there's one of me and there are two ends of this board. So what I'm going to do is use some masking tape and that's going to be my helping hand. And I'm going to need a nice sharp pencil. So on this end, I've already got my angle cut, my miter. And I'm going to get everything positioned and use the masking tape to keep it there. That looks good. That lets me come to the other end of the cabinet, eyeball that end again. And here, what I want to do is mark this right at the outside corner of the case. I'm a big advocate of transferring measurement rather than taking measurement. If I try to do this with a tape measure or a stick rule, really, really hard to execute. So now I can take this off, take it to my miter saw, and make that miter cut. Before I glue and fasten this baby in place, let's use this trick again. Make sure it's just right. And the way I'll check its length is by grabbing the piece that returns down this other side and hold that up here to make sure that corner lines up just right. All right, that's good to go. So next thing I can do is take it back down and apply glue. One of the things you wanna pay attention to when you put a crown molding or really any molding on a cabinet is the notion that I've got a nice cabinet there right now, it's all sanded, everything is clean and good to go. I don't want glue pouring down the face of that cabinet. So there are glues in the marketplace that are specifically designed to help prevent the glue from running. And that's the best kind of glue to use for these applications because you, you can just tell by how I'm, as I'm wiping this on, it's got some viscosity to it. It's nice and thick. And the beauty of that is that when I hold this piece up against the cabinet, I'm not going to end up with big gobs of glue running down the face. No runs, no drips, no errors. Kind of a baseball thing. It really pays off when I put glue on my gussets up here because this thing is cantilevered out at a funky angle. And that no drip glue does a nice job of just hanging there instead of ending up in my face. In addition to those glue surfaces, let me check my miters here. I also want to get glue on the miter joint itself. Now we're ready to put everything together.
Well, that is quite a crowning achievement for this cabinet. It does a great job of really dressing it up on the top there. I just have my last piece to put on that side and crown molding on this project is all done. Mm -hmm.